stories on our adventure sailing from Denmark to Greece. Well, and now we've arrived in Sakhalin, and which also means that we turned the corner of Portugal. Yeah, avoided the the most uh, yeah the. Which means that. <laughs> Thank you. No, oceanographer okay. for you guys. No, right okay. here. Here we Come go on, again. We go again. I can do it. <laughs> so yeah, we cornered. We avoided the predominant Atlantic swells. Ooh. Although we were tired, we find a little sh bay. We had a swim and we had a nap, and we continued with nice offshore winds yes. down the coast. The last 25 miles to Lagos. What happened? I think they have attacked the couple. And what do they do when they attack? Is it really an attack or what are they doing? Well, here their opinions are scattered. I think they play. I don't think it's Yeah, me very... too. What? Yeah, me too. But I don't think it's a very fun play. Like Not for us. Not for the people on the boat. No. Like, they are having a marvelous time. Yeah, and they take off with the rudder. Which is like even worse. Like, like one would... thing is breaking our rudder, guys, but you really have to take off with it as well. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what you do if they take off. I mean, obviously you have a problem, but how you, you would build a rudder, like, oh, yeah. does that? Do you call Mr. Rassi and be like, do you still have a rudder from 36 years ago? <laughs> so, dear Halberg Rassi, if the orcas come by and take our rudder, will you please sponsor a new one for us? <laughs> well, they should, okay. I mean, uh, I'm not, I don't have that much break. confidence in the insurance you signed up for. Yeah, Are you sure that orca attack is covered? Yeah, maybe it's the act of God. Ah. And then it's like, not covered. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. We'll see what happens. We're just gonna put a plywood down there and sail back to Greece. That sounds like a very... We will do a safe strategy. Yes. Yes. So we we have been we had been monitoring the movements and the interactions of the orcas because since 2020 these little buggers have started to interact with boats. So unfortunately, this sometimes, uh, or at least at 50% of the cases, I think causes uh, the boats to take a little bit of a damage. So or lose the entire rudder. No, they go for the rudder. They're that's like, a little damage. Yeah, they they're playing with the rudder, as yeah. they said. Yes. Or they bend the prop shaft and so on. But anyway, mm -hmm. so we weren't very keen on having such interactions with them. Most of the summer they are by the Gibraltar Strait, but then by late summer autumn they start to move up to actually the north coast of Spain. Yeah, that's. Yes. That's the rough pattern, of course. Yeah. Some sub, or I don't know even but if they. But we knew when they had this pattern, we could see that they were starting to move out of the Gibraltar Strait and along the south coast of Spain and Portugal. So we knew they were headed our way. So we quickly um, hit behind Sagres and we quickly went to Lagos. We met up with the, our friends who happened to be down there surfing and we spent a couple of fun days 
with them enjoying the beautiful Algarve coast and there wasn't much surfing but you managed to go out on the wing foil and because it was flat we could also go for a day exploring the very famous caves on our side. Of you now, though my memories turn and bleak. I'm still walking this road, though my knees they are ever so weak. I never thanked you for putting your faith on a bomb like me, yeah. And wherever you are, I think it's who you were meant to be. So we headed a, a couple of miles further down the coast, basically just one beach from Lagos and there is this lovely estuary which is famous for kite surfing. Super beautiful bay which is very nicely protected, it has a lot of nice sandbanks, shallow water. also known for being a very good kite surfing spot because it also there's always a thermal wind in the afternoon and it's ideal for any level so we decided to hang around there and kite surf and wing foil and have fun I also gave Pernilla some lessons because uh, she had tried it before kite surfing but it had been a while since we had Kai and this bay seemed ideal, flat water, shallow, so we did a couple of hours of lessons. Unfortunately there were, it was becoming quite crowded in the afternoons because it's such an ideal spot with a thermal wind coming in. Uh, we were still waiting for the orcas to kind of pass. Yeah, we could tell that the orcas were headed straight for us and we kind of hoped that if we spend a couple of days kite surfing in this bay then they would pass by us while we were in there. So yeah, our strategy included following. We decided not to do any night sails mm. out of the simple reason because it's wouldn't be great if anything happens at night you won't see the orcas coming you won't see those beautiful animals so yeah it would be less scary it would whatever happens is less scary in daylight day. and you you can film them and yeah. go viral on youtube like they're doing now <laughs> well, 
yeah we were also trying to go for the silver linings because obviously we would love to see orcas like this is not the way we would prefer to have that experience but we were just like if they come then at least we want to be able to see them yeah yes our other strategy was to go as silent as possible mm. so we didn't use any echo sounders and so on and we tried to sail all the time and the third one which was... which made us a lot slow because there wasn't a lot of wind so yeah. we, were, we were going slow but... and doing the... little hops yeah. and then we also decided to stay as close as possible to the shore not in too deep waters I mean I, I don't think... I mean they can probably hunt Mm. wherever they want but maybe if, I don't know the tuna prefers to stay a bit deeper and not too shallow and if anything happened and it's not too wavy you can always yeah anchor, very, very anchor off and uh, yeah decide yeah. what to do yeah when we decided to leave the bay and go to battle <laughs> we're like we can't wait anymore and yes then we had a very close encounter with the orcas yeah we, yeah. As, yeah we were just engineering we were like Two or three miles of the river mouth there where it, you enter to Faro and it was completely quiet. We saw some fish and stuff and suddenly I heard this huge bubble going next to us. It was like two meters wide and you could just hear the bloop. And we were immediately super alert and scared. Mm. I yeah we, we stressed a little bit you said we should turn off the engine i was like no we're gonna we were just like a hundred meters from no maybe a couple hundred meters from shore and mm. and i said we're gonna go into shallow waters maybe that will hold them from messing around so we did that um, we saw we saw fins in the distance and we couldn't really decide if they were dolphins or orcas because they were very far away at that point but I mean, but, together with the bubble and the fact that... Yeah, they, they're they known to do these big bubbles. I don't know any other animal. I mean, maybe yeah. it could have been bigger dolphins, but... We we haven't seen that I, no. before or after that. We think it was... And also, we found out the day later, yeah, the day after, that the orcas had had two, two, two encounters or interactions with boats. Just there. Just there. So we think we might just have gotten really lucky and yeah. they decided to <laughs> to go for another boat. They found a more delicious rudder. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah. So, so that we, was really, really, really yeah, close. Looking afterwards the attack mm. where they happened, we were like <laughs> <laughs> That so, was close. And yeah. yeah, we continued like that. We had this amazing exit of the river mouth there. You, there's some yeah, footage. Yeah, because we, we had this, because we put all these limits to ourselves that we would only sail sail in daylight, and because the wind was so so, <laughs> it meant that we were just going at these times, and we kind of forgot to think about the the currents. Yeah, the, yes. the tidal currents there so at the river mouth. Were we had quite one day when we left Fao where we absolutely messed up. First of all, leaving was just... Nearly impossible. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't time the exit today very well. Kind of fighting the strong currents here. We tried to go in the counter current if there is any, but that's too close to the rock. So we're getting a bit... Look at it over there. Whoa. So you can get a real idea of, of how strong this current is. It's like the water is boiling. And whoa! We could have taken that into account, but we're not the smartest people. So now we are pushing our engine that shouldn't be pushed to go through it. Because yeah. we are just that smart, aren't we, babe? Yeah, but now it's painfully close, but we really need to... Yeah. You can do it! Come we're, on, Dory! We're nearly full speed and we're doing you can just do over two knots. This is not great for an engine that doesn't have an oil cooler anymore. And kind of needs you can, you can see how the... You can see how the level is further down in... <gasps> Oh yeah, that's crazy. Like oh. a oh well, mistakes must be 
be made as long as the consequences are not too big we'll learn from them hopefully one day but it was just a short distance we pushed the engine and we made it out of there yes just and then on the way on the sail there was a massive thunderstorm just yeah. on our tail And that made me very nervous because we yeah. went to this river. You remember what it's called? No. Anyway, it's this bordering river that borders between Spain and Portugal. And the entrance is charted at two, three, three meters or so. So the sandbank. And mm. so this thunderstorm was coming from behind. There's nothing. And I expected it to create quite some waves there. And in three meter depths, going into this narrow entrance would have not been very and again we messed up the current times going in so yeah but that was not too bad no, so the, the, the thunderstorm you know, we, was we, we, we made the quick. same mistake twice in a day it's never yeah, but it's we never couldn't. something to be proud of <laughs> <laughs> a little bit too exciting here oh, the depth is only 2.5 we're going 4.3 I don't even actually, yes, this. it's very very strong 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 current so, and we timed the current perfectly it's still flowing out yeah basically it was flowing in when we went out of the harbor we did great today we are the example of not what to do but to be fair it's like what now. not to do yeah. the example of what not to do yeah that's what i said no you said you the can example play it in reverse and can see exactly do. what i said <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, oh, shit. we'll see you later right. 2.6 meters that's great yeah. but yeah we made it in the river we had we anchored in there for two days i so. think this is where the video stops already yeah okay thanks for watching <laughs> yeah thank you thank you for all your lovely comments we hope you'll come back and watch the next episode where we sail through the strait of Gibraltar. i get into a little bit of a fight with a monkey <laughs> <laughs> stay tuned stay tuned bye so since this episode has been about the orcas uh, and we really much love the animals and everything we also of course love the orcas although they might be messing around a little bit with us boaters mm. uh, we have been lucky enough to not be attacked friends of us has had even closer encounters and Poor Mark from Tulita, he actually lost his entire rudder to them. Mm. We have heard so many opinions about that and some few are rather radical. So kill those orcas. Something you shouldn't even be thinking, you shouldn't even be saying. Mm. Because those poor animals are completely endangered. Okay, even though this behavior might be disturbing, there never has there been any uh, reported incident of them hurting anyone anyone nobody has knock on wood so far been in any real danger like yeah. people lose a rudder they get a tow some people actually managed to get to the marina themselves this is going to um, trigger a whole discussion we yes. hope it's positive but <laughs> to me it's just baffling that anybody would suggest that we should go and kill innocent animals because they they get in a way it is it is it doesn't make any sense. It has become thing that way. I think it has become part of the game for now, yeah. until the situation improves. Yeah. You as the captain or any crew has to be informed about it and has to take a calculated decision. And you you have to know that it might end up with uh, damage or financial loss to your property. Okay. That's not great, but. Uh, Apart from that, I think following the guidelines that Orca Iberica provides, uh, they have, they're updating the website, you can see the interactions, there are also some Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. uh, following the pattern is one thing, staying quiet and other things, there's some options of avoiding them. Uh, and a bit of luck, 
or yeah and apart from that I think it's also very important that uh, there will be a broader discussion of how to even further protect those animals so mm. maybe they also for sure they they are in distress nobody knows exactly why they're doing this yeah but we do know that the tuna population which they feed on is rapidly declining yes yeah they often have um, come as many species nowadays to compete directly like dolphins compete fishermen mm. seals competing fishermen and this of course once uh, somebody's livelihood is involved it gets into aggression so some people might have heard those orcas uh, they might see boats of smaller size as their enemy it doesn't really matter what it is uh, mm. what I want to what we want to conclude or say in the end is that for sure those orcas even though some say it's a play they also I think they would rather play with baby tunas or mm. other tunas rather than hitting rocket hard steel or messing around near a propeller and getting hurt and we, i just want to say that you're probably thinking like oh it's very easy for you to say you guys got really lucky and you didn't lose your rudder and a lot of money and it's easy for you to sit and preach and we completely understand how lucky we were that we managed to get by without yeah any interaction only a close encounter and that's it um but that doesn't really matter that's mm -hmm. we would we would honestly look at it the same way even if we had had uh, an interaction and lost our rudder. We just see this as this is a risk that we cannot get around. And if it happens, it happens and then you just you just have to accept that. And mind you, we also know that at some point we have to leave the med again. We will have to go past these orcas again. So I still lose our rudder to the orcas and we just, we just have to be fine with that. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it is. You just have to be fine that something can break. That's that's sailing. That's cruising. So please love the yeah. orcas. <laughs> <laughs> please help them uh, mm -hmm. be those magical animals we all want to see. And that, I mean, there's so few left that if we do anything in this in a harmful direction, I mean, that's it. There might be never any orcas. Yes. Uh, at least near the mat again. Mm -hmm. So love them. Take care of them and take care of yourself. Bye! Bye! <laughs>